God of Islam, Allah is identified as all-knowing and all-wise. Yet he doesn't know some of the basics and he does lots of miracles. In one of the miracles, as he teaches people how to do basics, he uses a bird, a crow. In the story of Cain and Abel in Islamic version, we get to see while Cain murders his brother, he doesn't know what to do with it. Allah decides to teach Cain how to bury his brother. And Allah to do this, Allah uses a bird and bird comes and teaches Cain how to bury his brother. Daughter of Christ, let's have a little bit fun with this. So we are in Surah 5, verse 31. Yes, so you find the story in Surah 5. It's a funny story. Uh, by the way, Cain and Abel, uh, the Quran gets their names wrong. It calls them Qabil and Habil. Uh, I think probably Muhammad forgot the name Cain, so he just rhymed it with Abel to make it uh, Qabil and Habil instead of Abel and Cain. But for simplicity, we'll call, we'll call them Cain and Abel. This is verse 31. After Cain has just murdered Abel, Allah sent a crow scratching up the ground to show him how to hide his brother's naked corpse. He said, Woe to me, am I not able to be as this crow and so hide my brother's naked corpse? And so he became um, uh, re repentant. And that's what the uh, verse says. So what do you think of this uh, so far, sister? Oh, well, well-detailed, well-explained Quran doesn't make that much sense right now. So how about we go to Al-Qurtubi and then see how Qurtubi explains to us this well-detailed, well-explained verse, Surah 5, verse 31 from Al-Qurtubi. Yeah, so uh, Al-Qurtubi Tafsir is available to everyone in Arabic from a website, and that's what we found, where we found. Uh, I translated it to the English, this is Qurtubi 531. Allah says, Allah sent a crow searching in the ground. Mujahid said, Allah actually sent two crows fighting until one killed the other. So the murderous crow dug the earth and buried it. The son of Adam was the first to ever kill. It was said the crow normally digs the earth to look for its food and to hide it there until it needs it, as it was the habit of the crow to do so. Therefore, it alerted Cain to hide his brother. So you're a bird watcher, sister, or you were. What do you think so far? This is so far so amazing. So, <laughs> well-detailed, well-explained Quran is also explained by Qurtubi and it simply states actually in Islamic tradition we don't know how many birds were there. Was there only one crow or two crowds? And they are fighting with one another and it's not only enough. Now, human being is going to observe this in a sense to figure out what Cain is going to do to his brother. Yeah, so uh, we don't know if the crow came across a, a dead crow or if it killed it. According to Kortubi, they were fighting. Uh, it goes on to say, sister, it was narrated that uh, Cain, when he killed his brother, he put him in a wrap cloth and he walked with him, carrying him over his neck for a hundred years. Okay, just, just a moment. Um, on the, um, I think in Ibn Kathir it talks about um, one version that Allah also sends like dead bird and then dead bird, live bird kind of buries the dead bird. So there is like differences in Ibn Kathir account. But this, I'm just a bit confused on while Cain kills his brother, he walks around with him for a hundred years. So there is a dead body with Cain, wherever Cain is, that body is traveling with him for 100 years. That's a very long time. Yeah, I mean, you think the body would decompose. And why is he carrying well, him around for 100 years? Why not just leave him? Yeah, but, so he couldn't figure out what to do. It is the first crime. 
So he couldn't. He he's going to observe the bird and then put that together. It's going to take time, sister. Come on, we are talking about Islamic people here. So for a hundred years, he couldn't work out what to do. And he couldn't ask his father, Adam, who Muslims uh, believe is a prophet. That means he has access to God. He couldn't ask him what to do for a hundred years. Uh, Mujahid said, and Ibn al-Qasim narrated from Malik, that he carried him around you know, for a year. Oh, so Muslim scholars are not very clear if it was for a hundred years or for one year. Not much, diff not much difference. Not much difference. No, it is pretty different. <laughs> In 100 years, there is a lots of question of what happened to that dead body because all the kind of flash is going to go off, get sm smell, all those kind of things, okay? Versus in one year, there will be still bones around. And it's only like 99 years difference between them. Anyway. <laughs> Just... It's not a big thing. Uh, it was said that Cain did not know what to do with him until he followed the example of the crow. Uh, and then Anas uh, starts talking about uh, a hadith from the Prophet saying that Allah actually gives the son of Adam three gifts at death. Would you like to know what they are, sister? I'd love to know what <laughs> gifts people are getting for the death. The first gift that you get after death is the stench of the bad smell. Oh, okay. So that means like someone is dead, they smell badly, therefore you want to bury them. Yes. Okay, that will make it easy to say goodbye to your loved ones. Okay, that, I'll, that's clever. Yes, yeah, so according to Muhammad, if there was no bad smell after death, no one would bury anyone. Yeah, so it's make it easy to say goodbye to your beloved ones. Okay, clever. that's the first gift. That's clever. So the first gift is the bad smell. The second gift is the worms that come to the dead body. Because if the worms uh, did not get into the dead body, the kings would keep those dead bodies um, even more so than uh, wealth, than dinars and dirhams, than money. To do what? To the, for the body to disintegrate, to, to decompose, I'm guessing. No, like why would kings keep them? That's a good question, sister. I don't know why kings would keep dead bodies. It's a stranger thing for Muhammad to say. Um... And he gets something else wrong. He thinks that bodies decompose because of worms. That's not true. Bodies decompose because of uh, microscopic organisms in um, in the air, not worms. But that's another. At this stage, I believe you are being so fussy. Because <laughs> first man and woman doesn't, first murderer doesn't even know what to do with the dead body. And you are just talking about the science side of it. Don't be fussy, sister. <laughs> show some grace. Okay, I'll show some grace. So there's, um, so far you've got nice gifts, bad smell, worms, and the third gift is death after old age. So death in itself is a gift, if you're old, according to him. Because a man would reach old age until he's bored of himself, and his family is bored of him, including his sons and relatives. So death would be better for him. That's according to Muhammad. How can that be? Because old people are much lovely. And today, in 21st century, you get to see old people are living like teenagers. <laughs> How can they be bored? According to Muhammad, they will be bored. And I'm sick of this now. And even their family will be bored of them. No, they've got like now lots of wisdom. They can do lots of things. So it's not about like their body is getting less flexible or their body is getting old and now they can't move around. It has nothing to do with that. It's just because, oh, they are old. They've got nothing to do now. <laughs> they can't even play puzzles. Anyway, anyway, so wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. It is all wisdom. So it's interesting. Uh, some said Cain knew how to bury, but he left his brother in the wilderness, despising him. So Allah sent a crow digging into the dust over Abel to bury him. So then Cain said, Oh, woe to me, have I failed to be like this crow and hide my brother's naked body? And he became regretful because he saw that Allah honored Abel, that he sent the crow to hide him, and it was not the regret of repentance, according to Ibn Abbas. What do you think? So even though 
he killed his brother, still there is a jealousy going on. There is something, there is a problem in heart, but I am like always fascinated by the wisdom of Allah. He looks at the body of Abel and then he says, okay, Cain is not going to get rid of this. What I can do is let me send a crow. What crow will do is crow will set the example. Great. But, but I'm confused, sister. I thought the crow was sent because Cain couldn't, didn't know what to do, just didn't know. He was carrying him around for a hundred years. Now it says that he did know, but he was just jealous. Come on, sister. We can't say there are contradictions or well-detailed, well-explained Quran um, as Kurtubi is trying to unpack that well-detailed, well-explained Quran gives you the different accounts and Allah knows best which one is correct. It was said that Adam and Eve came to gray, the grave of Abel and cried for him for, there for days. Then Cain was at the top of a mountain and an ox headbutted him, so he fell to the bottom of the hill and his veins were dispersed. And it was said that Adam uh, prayed against Cain, so the earth swallowed him up. And it was said that Cain became wild after he killed Abel and he remained in the wilderness and he only ate the beasts that he overpowered and cut them up until it, they died and then he would eat them. What do you think? It's all very much wonderful. <laughs> so um, if Adam and Eve were around, why couldn't Allah send Adam and Adam or Eve to Cain to tell him what to do instead of sending a crow that can't speak? So you mean uh, your mother and father will be better example to teach you the basics? Yeah, especially that Adam is meant to be a prophet from Allah, according to Muslims. So why couldn't Allah send Adam to tell Cain, look, we need to bury your brother? Instead of uh, giving him an example of the crow, uh, it just seems more e easier. And what happened to Cain, sister? Um, it seems like there's so many opinions of what happened to him. Did the earth swallow him up? Or did an ox headbutt him to the, down of the, to the bottom of the hill? Allah knows best, sister. Uh, if you want to know what happened to Cain, I guess you ought to go read the Bible, read Genesis. But here, they don't know. And um, when we go to Genesis account, actually, we get to see something much interesting. Yes, there is a lots of fun in Islamic version of story of Cain and Abel. And it is full of miracle how a crow comes and then teaches first criminal have to bury his brother, all those kind of things. But on the serious side of the story, when we go to Christian scripture, we get to ask some serious questions. So first man and woman separated from God because of their disobedience to Lord. Because they questioned the goodness of God, they disobeyed, they sinned, and separation between man and God took place. And you wonder, after separation takes place, Adam uh, have sex with his wife, and then Eve makes babies. Cain and Abel are brothers. There is something in human heart causes Cain to have jealousy towards his brother. And Christian scripture talks about, oh, it is the offering they brought to Lord that caused uh, danger because one of them was giving full heart versus other one wasn't doing that. There, there was a problem with their offering. But it's not only that. That causes Cain to kill his brother. And in the biblical account, Lots of basic questions on the reality of human heart is being asked. For example, after the fall, Cain is the first man, gives us the impression actually he doesn't even know who God is. You would expect Adam and Eve walked and talked 
with God, they had fellowship with God before fall, they told their children how they end up being separated with God. You would expect them to tell beauty and beauty of God to their children because they saw how kind and generous God was, what God created, how he created all different type of birds, uh, different type of animals, flowers, everything. God is so kind and generous. You would expect them to tell that to their kids. Since there is some parenting thing is going wrong because soon after Cain kills his brother, God, God questions him, where, where is your brother? And then he says, am I his keeper? Am I his keeper? By thinking, actually, Lord doesn't know what's happening. In mind of Cain, you get to have the impression, actually, he doesn't know God. He doesn't know Lord is all-knowing, all-powerful. He doesn't know Lord is relational. He doesn't know the heart of God. And that is the like first child after the fall. And then Lord says, what you've done, of course, like, Lord tells Cain what, what Cain has done is causing, uh, um, what is the word um, has been used? Um, it's not coming to my mind. Causing earth to cry out, blood of Cain, b blood of Abel to cry out for, for what happened. Lord shows the Cain that he is all-knowing. He knows what he did, and then therefore he punishes Cain. Cain has to deal with the consequences of being first murderer. And that's not enough. We get to see God's grace. God is so kind and so generous to Cain. He even, when Cain freaks out that now, as Lord sends him, Cain freaks out that people are going to kill him. He's not going to survive. But what God does is he shows his kindness and his grace. He puts this mark on his forehead so that Cain will be protected. See how serious it is? Story of Cain and Abel shows us heart of man. It shows us how people how first man and woman knew God and what they passed on their children. And after the fall, what first criminal, first criminal's view of God, I find it's very amazing. Like Eve's view before, sorry, topic is just changing, but it, Eve's view on God before fall and after fall. And Cain's view of God before murdering his brother and after murdering, after, uh, after he's experiencing the grace of God with the mark of protection on his forehead. When I get to the bosom of the Father, I love to, I love to hear how, how they have seen, what is the view of first man and woman? and first children of God. It will be so in, in interesting, but sadly, Islam gives us, Islam fails to give us who God is and who, what really happened in its fullness. Islam comes and then steps in as the daughter of Christ read to us. A bird comes and then teaches first murderer have to bury his brother. Amen. Amen, sister. And we see from the Bible that the Lord speaks directly to Cain, whereas the God of Islam sends a crow because yeah. he doesn't, he's not relational, he doesn't speak to people. He speaks to Cain. Where is Abel, your brother? So are you trying to tell me 
crow is more relational than Allah in Islamic version. Crow is like able to teach basic skills to Cain and set an example while Allah stands back. Yeah. And the Allah family of silent. Cain stands back. Allah is silent. He sends a crow to make Cain feel regretful, but he himself didn't speak to him. Sister, yes. even though it is funny, it is funny to learn new skills from a bird. Sometimes it can be helpful. What do you think it tells us overall for the, I don't know, relationship between first bird and first crim <laughs> crime, criminal? Yeah, uh, the bird taught the one of the first humans what to do when Allah didn't, it was too distant and too far away to speak to him. The God of the Bible, the real God, he spoke to Adam and Eve. He spoke to Cain. And uh, he just, uh, the God of Islam does the same thing today, sister. He's too far away to tell, actually tell Muslims in the Quran what actually happened in the story in his detail. He's the same far away, unrelational God. So we have to go to other humans, like Qurtubi and uh, Mujahid and Ibn Abbas to try and piece together what happened. And they say, maybe this happened, maybe this happened, maybe that happened. Because their God doesn't bother to tell them. That's their God. And we say, come to the real God who tells us these uh, lessons and these stories in detail in the Bible. Doesn't leave out any detail. That's the relational God that you want and is the real God. Come on, sister.